Hello everyone, in this tutorial, a video tutorial, I'm going to talk about the HTML table. We'll talk about the structure, how to create one, and how to style it. Uh, I'm using uh, uh, WebStorm uh, for as an editor, and I'm using uh, JetBrain Live Edit uh, to be able to see the instance changes on my editor in Chrome browser. Okay? So let's go ahead. Uh, table, we usually use it because we want to show the information in a tabular format in the format of low rows and columns so we want to organize them in a way that we can identify the data better and easily so in order to create a table simply you go with the table tag uh, a table tag is a block tag and uh, it's, it's just a container so as you can see nothing is, is changing here and uh, a table consists of rows and columns so if i want to go ahead and define a row let's say i just want to create a table with one row i simply will go ahead and start with the tr tag tr stands for table row and simply uh it, it allows you to create multiple columns inside one row so if I want one column only, I, I just need a cell or I need a table data where, where I can store information. I simply need to use TD, stands for table data. Right here, I can go ahead and put a value. For instance, I can go ahead and say this is column one, right? So as soon as I do this, uh, simply uh, let, me, let me just go ahead and refresh this. I don't know what is, uh, why the life is not working and sometimes it puts extra data because it's instantly update. So sometimes I have to refresh it. But anyway, so in this case, what I did is I just have created a table with one column. If I need to have more than one column, simply I have to create the same structure. So I'll go ahead and create another uh, TD tag and then simply I'll go ahead and say this is column two, right? So as you can see, I have two columns and one row. Of course, some of you might ask, uh, where is the border? I cannot identify the rows and columns. That's very correct. Because by default, the border of the table is zero. Uh, you may, in the old fashioned way, before HTML5, you could just go ahead and say border is equal one. So in this case, you can see the border around the table, right? Or you also could go and say uh, cell spacing, let's say uh, 10. Uh, and you can see the cell spacing is spaced around the cell. Also, you could say cell padding. And in that case, you can put a padding around the cell as well. All these three attributes are obsolete in HTML5. You cannot use them. You have to use CSS to implement those. And I'm going to show you how. So for now, uh, let's go ahead and uh, create a border around the table. So I'll go and open my style section. And simply my selector will be the table tag. And I will use the border one pixel solid black. Okay. Let's see what happens. So adding that into the table, uh, it just puts a border around the table. Now what I have to do is if I really want to see the columns, I have to add the border around the TD tags as well. So I'll group the table tag with the TD tag. So in this case, when information comes back, you can see there are border. Let me just make this one a bit bigger so you can see better. So you can see there is a border around the TD tag and the table itself, right? So now what happened here is, um, for instance, uh, I want to go ahead and add uh, another row here. So for that reason, I can simply go ahead, copy the TR that I had, and paste it right at the end, and change the value. So for instance, I can go and say, uh, call uh, one, or it's right the way we can understand it. Row one, column one, right? And then I have uh, row two, row one, column two. Let me just put the formatting properly. And here I can say uh, row two, column one, and row two, column two. Does that make sense? So I simply uh, can copy the same structure of any row within the table and paste it on the top or the bottom of the other TR tag and create an extra TR or TD tag. Now, what you have to remember is, regardless of number of columns and row you have in the table, always these numbers must match. Meaning, if the very first TR has two columns, the second TR and, uh, or any other TR after that must contain two columns, right? We're going to change this rule a bit in future, but for now, just keep in mind, the number of columns in each row of a table must be equal. Okay. Remember we talk about the properties, uh, cell padding and the cell spacing. I want to go ahead and create those as well. So if I want to do uh, cell padding, 
I can simply go ahead and say, okay, TD tag, uh, always select the TD because I want to add padding to the TD. And simply I can go say padding, let's say five pixel, right? So if I do this, uh, simply it's going to add five pixel padding, as you can see, to every single column in this uh, table. So this is very similar to cell padding attribute we used before. Now I want to go ahead and do cell spacing. For instance, I want to do cell spacing. I want to have a space around the cell of five pixel. The very first thing is uh, the cell padding or sorry, cell spacing must be applied to the table tag. So I'm going to select the table tag and then I will use another um, uh, property of the table, which is called border collapse. And these are the possible value. I can either collapse or I can separate. Uh, by, by default, it is separate. As you can see, they're separated, right? So if I go and say collapse, let's see what happens. You see that? They become one. Or I can just simply go ahead and say separate, right? Which is the default one. And at the same time, I can add one more attribute to specify the cell spacing or space around the cell. So I can go ahead and say border uh, spacing and I can put five pixel. So if I go ahead and run this now, and you will simply see that there are some information is, let me just refresh this. Here you go, you see that? So you see the cell spacing around it. So if I make this one 15, then probably you will see it better, right? So this is how we specify cell spacing for, uh, uh, for the column in our table. Uh, there are a few other things I want to go ahead while I'm here. Uh, for instance, um, I can go ahead and say um, table margin, uh, let's say zero for top and bottom and auto for left and right, right? So if I do this right now, uh, my table simply has to go to the center of the page. Here you go. So this is on center right now, right? So I can center the whole thing. Uh, I can do some of the attribute later on. I'll come back to this, but let's go on and uh, do some more on the table itself. Let's go ahead and change these value. I want to uh, store some uh, people's name here. So I'll go Joe, uh, Doe. The second name is uh, Robert. Then uh, Nero. Let me go ahead and add another one. So I'm just gonna, in order to add another row, I just copy the same row. Remember I said the number of column and row must match. So I simply go ahead and change this one to, uh, let's say Hannah. Uh, Montana, right? So as you can see, I have three first and last name. Uh, right in here. Uh, so sometimes you need to specify or have uh, to label the column as what type of value, what kind of value it holds. So in order to do that, I can go ahead at the beginning of the table, add another row, but this time, since I want to label this column, instead of using TD, I can use TH, stands for table header, right? So I can go here and say first name, and then I can have the second one, last name right look at this now of course when you look at this you see it doesn't contain the border the reason is we just have to go group the th as well so th will have its own border as well right in here for padding i can do the same thing too right so now if i do this then you will see they all look the same the big difference between the td and th comes from here let, let me show you something i will go and say td uh, i want all the td tag to have the width of let's say uh, 150 pixel okay so if I do this as a matter of fact you see the TD tag or expand and the TH or expand too because remember the every content in any row will pushes all the other element of other rows in this case TDs to have the same width as well so now if you look at this the difference between the TD and TH is the TH are center and bold while the TD are not right now I can simply change this I can go ahead and say TR TD uh, first child all right, so I'm selecting the very first child of the TD tag inside the TR and I say uh, text align right so if I do this simply as you can see the content of the very first TD are all moved to the right I can do center as well 
so I can make them all center, right? I can do some other thing as well. I can go and say uh, font weight bold or bolder, right? So as you can see, I can do a lot of changes into the content of the TD tag. To be able to organize the table, we can divide the table information into two, three different sections. For instance, I can have the head section of the table, I can have the body of the table or body section, and then I can add a footer section, right? So in order to do that, I can simply go ahead and add another, uh, another tag, which is called T head. So the T head identifies the head section of a table which contains one too many rows. Uh, as you can see, nothing has changed in the table, right? But uh, the advantage of adding the T head is now I have another selector that I can use in my CSS. So I can simply go ahead and say T head uh, color. Let's say, oh, let's do background color. Background uh, color. Uh, let's do it uh, bluish something maybe not that maybe this right uh, let's put some color here to make it white so as you can see now with using the t head i can actually get a group of td and modify them as a selector i can i can get the td t head tag as a selector and then change whatever is inside that i can do that with the body section as well so i can simply go ahead and say t body right so in this case, whatever is in the body section, I'll put it inside the T-body tag. Of course, I always indent my code so I can identify where the T-body starts and where T-body ends, right? Now, if you look at this, I can simply go ahead, T-body, and um, I can go ahead and say, uh, let's say color, uh, I want to make them yellow. Hmm? I know it's not very pleasant color for the content, right? But that's something I can do. Or let me change it to something else. Uh, maybe green. Let's see if it looks good. Uh, it doesn't look very green. Uh, let me use another one. Uh, yes, that, that should be it, right? So if I go and update the page, you can see the content of the T body. Every single TD has a blue color, right? I said I can have T footer as well, right? So I can go say T foot. And right in here, I can add a TR tag that contains the TD information for the footer. So in this case, uh, I just go ahead. Don't worry, you can add TH if you need to. So I will say uh, 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 foo, I don't know what to put at this moment, but uh, fee, right? So I have two columns in each uh, TR, so I'll have to have same across the page. So I'll just go ahead and save this. And then I refresh the page uh, to actually force this to um, update. So now I have the T footer. I can select the T footer as well, right? So I can go T foot, and then simply I can go ahead and say uh, background color. Let's say uh, it's very hard to pick color, isn't it? So if I do this. And then you can simply see with the T-Food selector, I can select everything inside it and do this, right? Uh, there are a few techniques I want to use as well here. For instance, uh, I can go ahead and do something like this. I can go and say TR, TD, uh, NTH, child, right? Uh, so I'm saying I want to I want to select the child based on the argument that I'm passing here. Uh, simply, I can go give me all the odd child right so if i do this i can go ahead and say background color let's say gray right so if i go do this and of course if i save and force the refresh it shouldn't happen i don't know why it's not refreshing so i can see that was happening right so of course here uh instead of adding it to td i can go ahead and add this to tr right then in this case it's going to be the same way in here right so as you can see, the TR are selected, right? So of course, I just want the body of these table to be selected. So I can simply go ahead and add T body selector at the beginning. Uh, so that way it actually will select only the TR that are in the T body. Let me just force the update here. Mm -hmm. Now you can see only 
these columns or these rows are selected. If I go ahead and change the odd to even, and you can see only the middle part it is. So this is another way of actually selecting different information there. Um, let me see what is left. So that is a very simple table, right? Um, I want to go ahead and show you one more thing. Let me let me let me show you what is that I want you to learn. As you remember, I said the number of columns in each row must match. So I have two columns in the first row, two columns in the second row, and so on, right? Now what I want to do is in the in the footer page, I actually want to have only one column. So I want to mix these two together. So whenever you want to span one column over to the other one, uh, that's that's what we want to learn, right? Uh, and one thing that you cannot see, there are two attributes to every single column you create to the ad. The attribute is called call span and is always one by default and row span is always one by default. So every single TD or TH tag you see contains these two attributes, but by default the value is one. Now when I said the number of columns must match in every single row, I meant the number of the call span and row span. So if you add this to, this is one and one is two, right? Look at this. So if I go and copy this one here, remember these are the default value. You do not need to mention this in any TD unless you change its value. So here, uh, if I say how many columns, I say one plus one is two. Same thing, one plus one is two. One plus one is two and one plus one is two. I said I want to mix these two, I want to put these two columns together. So if I have the same value on these two here, right, and if I want to mix these two or I span the first one to the second one, the only thing I need, because I want to change the column span, I just go ahead and make these two. If you look at this right now, it pushes the fee outside the box, right? So that indicates because the number of column span and row span must match in every single row, it means I have to get right of the last one. So I span this and I made one column, but it's still the call span or the number of call span in every single row is the same. I can do that with the rows as well. For instance, if I want to go ahead and mix, um, and let's say this one, uh, let me just put some space in. Somehow I want to make the Robert and Hannah uh, to be of, uh, let's say, let's say the Robert uh, has De Niro as a last name and has Montana as a last name, right? So what I'm going to do is instead of row span, in this case, I would say call span, uh, sorry, uh, instead of call span, I say row span is equal to, right? So if I do that, you can see Robert expand and pushes the Montana out of the picture. Is that correct? Now, remember, the number of row span must match in every row. One, two. And this is already two, right? Now, what happened is, since the row span is two, when it comes to this row, right now, this row span will take space on the third one. So I have one extra column that I have to get rid of. So now, as you can see, they all match, right? So I did row span, meaning I want to span to the next row. So that's why I have to take out one of the extra column that I have to be able to do this. Whenever you are given a table to actually do uh, do work on. If you see this is the format, I always suggest to put a dotted line across those parts that you don't see the border so you can identify the number of rows and columns. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you for watching.